Knicks fans of the round table. The round table discussion hosted by Knicks fans for the fans. All right, so um, another topic that I thought was interesting that, um, you know, was kind of brushed off. But over over the offseason, Frank Nielakina uh, was, was able to meet the mom of the black mom of Kobe Bryant at a workout session. Uh, other second-year guys were there, Kuzma was there. I, I want to say Donovan Mitchell was there, not quite sure. But um, it, it leads me to an interesting question because I, I wonder what, you know, the conversation was about and what Kobe was said to those guys. You know, what type of wisdom did he uh, impart on a young Frank Nielakina? We saw last year on Twitter when, when Kobe came out on Twitter and started issuing those Mamba challenges during the preseason to certain guys, you know, going after certain guys and really challenging them to, to be their best. Uh, so so the question of today is, what do you think, if you are fly on that wall, what do you think that Mamba challenge to Frank Nielakina needs to be this year? Uh, Jay Ellis, I'll start with you, man. What do you think Frank's Mamba challenge should be for this year? First and foremost, I think the I got two mama challenges for Frank. All right. Okay. First and foremost, first challenge is he needs to make Kyrie or Steven Jackson fall. He got to get in his bag this season. <laughs> Last season, he had a hole in his bag a lot of games. You know what I'm saying? There was a couple of games where he kind of stuttered. Kyrie crossed him. He fell on the floor. I need, I, I need some revenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the other one? Oh, the other one is I need Frank to get aggressive. I need him to average 10 to 15 shots a game. Yeah. I, I need him putting up shots. I need his arm tired. I want him to get an assist, of course, but I want him to be more aggressive attacking the basket and getting up some shots. Al, what do you think, man? What, what's your mom but challenge for Frank Nielakina this year? I was going to say the same exact thing, honestly. I feel like it's so obvious, you know. Maybe yeah. I should have been a little more original, but he's got to be aggressive beat, beat aggressive. <laughs> yeah. he's got it he needs to embrace his offense you know his own offense he can't he need too many times last year i feel like he was concerned about ever getting it make sure everybody else ate you know what i mean he's got to be concerned that he he's got to eat you know what i mean like he's got to he yes. has to look out for himself not be afraid to look for his own shot because i think and you know what i think the fizzdale is going to help with this because i think hornacek last year used to to kind of you know, get on him. And I feel like he, he gave him too short of a leash for a rookie point guard who clearly is like working on his game, you know? So I think, I think Fizdale will give him more of a green light this year than Hornacek ever did. And that'll help him out. Um, and then like, especially with Porzingis out, like this team's going to need scores. I mean, you saw once Porzingis went down last year that this team really struggled to find scores. Um, and, and, you know, there was never really a go-to guy. So I don't even know if Frank will necessarily turn into that guy, but he's got to at least try, you know, he's got to, he's, there's no, there's no wrong answers right now. Like the, the team brass has made it clear that like, they don't care how the team's going to do this year. Ultimately, you know, they, they just want to see progress. They want to see people getting better. They want to see people trying new things and trying to be better on the court. So that's the biggest thing for him, I think, is just be aggressive, look for his own shot, and don't don't be afraid to look for his own shot. You know, that's the biggest thing. Just get yeah. get rid of any any fears that he had. Let's say that. I'll change mine. It won't be be aggressive. It'll be mm-hmm. let go of all of his fears. Like let, let go of any fear that he had for for you know being benched or whatever. Just just let it rip. You know what I mean? Don't be a fool, but you know, try to try to get better. Try to be more of a you know a, a scorer. Now yeah. be a fool, Chuck. I want him to- oh. <laughs> J.R. Smith. J.R. Oh, take, take a page from the Let J.R. playbook. Oh, man. Yo, J.R., this brother just dropped a children's book, man. You guys, Are you guys interested? <laughs> I didn't even know. All right. Look, yeah. man. What's it about? Man, I'm about man. it. I'll, I'll check it out. Look. I, I don't even want to guess what it's about, man. But- a, B, wait, is it A, B, C, D, E, F? G Hennessy I J <laughs> could it be our brotherhood? Yeah, it could be. Hey, it could be. <laughs> um, CK, what, what, what's your Frank uh, Nilakita Mamba challenge for this year? What are you challenging the the uh, the French Prince on this year? I don't care what anyone says. Game two of the summer league against the Utah Jazz, we saw aggressive Frank Nilakina. Yeah, we, I feel like we were grading him quite intently on that summer league. Like the first game, he was kind of uh, yes, shallow. He, and you yep. went, right? Did you which game did you go to? I was there. I was there for the first three okay. games. Yeah, I got okay. the first three. Um, and yeah, but the thing is, I'm one of those guys that 
loves the fact that we have a point guard. I know a lot of people want to put me at that too, but I love the fact that we have a point guard that does everything. And I just want him to expand on that. Like, t- like exactly like Alex said, like, okay, be aggressive, but at the same time, like take it to that next level and continue to be that all around guard. We have, he has the capability to score. We saw him take it into the post. I, again, I understand it's summer league, but at the same time, you get to see these flashes. That means it's in his game. He yes. just has to do them against, you know, players. I understand that, but it's in his game. So he has the capability of scoring in different areas, whether it be taking it to the hoop in the post. We know he has the jumper. We've seen him hit a few key threes last season. But at the same time, it might not result in assists, but he's so good at controlling the pace of the court, you know, whether it be fast rate, whether it be half court. And then on top of that, we know his defense. He's, he's, he has a potential to become a lockdown defender at some point in his career. So I just love the fact that we have a Swiss Army knife in Frank Nilakina and it just needs to be upped now because, you know, like Alex and Jay said, like he is – most likely, maybe not in the beginning of the season, but at some point, he's going to be our point guard, our starting point guard, and the guy that's hopefully going to go forward playing it next to uh, KP when he's healthy, playing next to whoever wants to be fill in, um, going on, you know, Knox, all these guys. So I just want to see him take all those things that we know he can do and just take it to the next level. So I would just, I, I would tell him my, my mama challenge to Frank Nilakina is. Just, just go out there, like, like, let it fly, like exactly what Alex said. Like, you can be aggressive, all of you, but I'm hitting D from what Jay said, from what Alex said, <laughs> and what you said, CP. D all of the above. Let, that's my, that's my mama challenge for Frank. I just want to see him take it to the next level, and I, we have a great situation where he'll be challenged with, um, you know, Trey Burke and Moutier, who are on that same guard, and, and you could throw Tim Hardaway in there too. But that guard corner that we have, um. And on top of that, Fizdale, who who loves, you know, aggressive and defense, and that's what he does. And he's going to give him, you know, the green light to do what he does. So I just want to see him take it to the next level. Yes. That's, that's my that's, is it Is that at the starting helm? You had mentioned that eventually you might be a starter. Who, who do you predict will will, uh, will win that job coming, Personally, coming out of training camp? Coming out, okay. Coming out of training camp, I think they're going to give it to Trey Burke. But I think personally, no, it's Jay, Jay not, Ellis, you disagree. What, what do you think? You no, no, I oh, agree. Okay, okay. Go ahead. I think ultimately it's got to be Frank. I like Trey coming off the bench better because of his because he brings offense and say you know Frank doesn't right away go into being you know shoot first kind of guard. We have that with Trey Burke, and at least we can bring that off the bench. But coming out of training camp, I I would be I would be surprised if we did not start off with Trey Burke as our starting point guard. Al, who's who's your starter coming out of camp? What's your prediction? I'm 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 gonna say I think it might be Frank. Uh, just kind of on the on the back of what uh, CK just said, that Burke's best role, I think it's pretty obvious, is coming off the bench, being the spark plug. You know, giving some scoring off the bench. He's good. He's a good assist man off the bench. He kind of makes that that second unit hum. And I think Fizdale will see that, you know, because sometimes it, it, you don't necessarily always start your five best players at that particular moment. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you bring a better player off the bench and maybe Trey will be closing games to start the year. Hopefully Frank will also be closing games, but I think it want Frank to start for his confidence for to get used to working with the starters, you know, just to, like I said, this year, it's like no wrong answers, you know, just go out there, <laughs> do your thing, you know, just it, Let's just try to get better, you know, but if we take some lumps, he already made that comment the other day about with Knox that he wants Knox to guard the best players in the league. Yeah, he's going to throw him into the fire. Exactly. He wants him to take his lumps. He wants him to get beat up a little bit. I think that's going to carry over to Frank too, because really Frank and Knox, I mean, they're, it's crazy, but Frank's a second year player, but he's the same age as some of these rookies coming in. So really like you could still treat him kind of like a rook, you know what I mean? Like in the sense of, He's still so raw. He's still growing into his body and stuff. Like, just throw him out there. Let him figure it out. You know, put him against the best, and eventually he'll be the best. That's the way I would look at it. Love that. Jay Ellis, Trey, Frank, or are we disrespecting the man Moutier? Man, listen, man. <laughs> I already, listen, listen. To me, it's Trey. It's Trey all day. This is still your minutes. He's going to still, still a spot. He's starting at one. We already know that. You know, we already know if it's, if it's keep what you kill, that's what Fisdale said. Fisdale said you keep what you yeah. kill. So does that I mean, can we really say that that Frank? What is he what has he killed? 
I'm not saying Frank ain't a killer. He's a button killer. He, I was like, he, he might, he's gonna end up killing Poppy in November, December, and try to <laughs> wrestle it away from Trey. But Trey was killing last season, averaging twenty and seven yeah. uh, when he started starting and but and getting some steals. So I just don't. And then you see the videos of him running in the sand in the off season. And stuff like that. <laughs> Yo, Trey, Trey sand. Burke is it's not trying to relinquish spot. that spot, boy. Trey Burke is not trying to let that go, man. You know, he's training with Pat. People was hitting him while he's chicken when he drives. Like, I don't, I don't, I just, man, I just, I, off the gate, I don't see him relinquishing that spot. Um, over time, though, I can see it happening. But um, even, I was just thinking today, what if it, what if it is a, a, a Trey at the one, Frank at the two, since we don't want to have all our best players coming coming in at the same time maybe we had Timmy coming off the bench for that and, and, and Trey did kind of uh he, he did compliment Frank in that light and, and thought that they would play well together I don't know if his Michigan backcourt mate would have would have appreciated that comment but uh he he did make it seem like him and Frank would be a compatible pair and I think they would uh but, that was one of our best man, I hadn't even yeah it's funny I hadn't even thought about that with the Trey and Tim thing. Yeah. That's that's kind of yeah. insulting, isn't it? That's kind of what Knicks fans do to Timmy, though, man. <laughs> yes. eh? That's what Knicks, Knicks fans have been talking about. Yo, we need to start Frank at the two, play Frank at the two, completely yeah. forgetting we, we got a guy making $17 million hey. at that spot. Yeah. He's not yeah. going nowhere, man. So, go ahead, JLs. Nah, nah, I was agreed with you. Nah, you can be six man of the year, man. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, we need some type of defense going into that first unit. I mean, I know. Tim Hardaway is taking some steps this season on the defensive end, or last season anyway, on the Budenholzer in Atlanta, but he still got he still got another level to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Frank, Frank can kind of help cover some ground, especially with Trey um, not being able to kind of defend at that level like Frank is right now. Maybe he needs like defend the next one. True indeed, true indeed. I have man. a wild call out of my mind, actually, but it's, it's, it's mad wild. Well, know. yeah, go ahead, man. Shoot it out there, man. A wild call lineup. Even though this is crazy, this is crazy. All right, <laughs> Trey. Okay. Frank. Okay. Knox. Okay. Who's your four? That's the crazy. Oh, <laughs> this guy's Mitchell. Oh, you going money, Mitch? You throwing money, Mitch? I know he has. To the I know he has his. I know he has his um deficiencies on defense, and he always kind of in the summer league he kind of covered it up with that athleticism, but. I don't know. You know what it is? When I think about Cancer and KP last season and how Cancer was kind of like a net negative for the first time in his career for the first part of the season because he had kind of KP roaming his back and swatting shots, I kind of feel like Mitchell can almost do something similar, even though he has like a learning curve. So I don't know if he's going to get there yet, but I feel like eventually that might be a good lineup to help someone cover Cancer. Down the road. CK, what do you think about that wild card lineup? That is, that is what it is. It's a wild card lineup. <laughs> that, <that's laughs> it. uh, I, I, as much as I love Mitch Robinson, I just don't think he's going to break the lineup early on in the season. I think yeah. they're they going to, you know, work him a little bit Makes first. Before he starts. Yeah. I agree with you, but I'm just, I agree with you, but I just, it's just. But I wouldn't you rather. Term, long term, mm-hmm. how. Mm-hmm. How cancer messed with Porzingis on mm-hmm. the defensive end and it covered that that thing that Cancer was bad at. It's kind of like how <laughs> Frank, Frank defense is the whole half of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying they, they complimented each other last season. That's all uh, I'm saying. Yeah. All right, Al, I'll give you the last word on this Frank topic. I want to. So I, I'll give my lineup. We're we're giving lineups. Yeah. I got. I've I've had one that's been in my mind lately. I okay. want to see. I want to see. It's actually pretty similar. To uh, Jay Ellis's, I want to see, I want to see Burke, Frank, uh, Knox, Hazonia, and Robinson. That's that's my lineup. I think that'd be a sick lineup. They'd just be running up and down. Yeah, that would be an athletic oh, lineup. Oh yeah. hell yeah! I mean, I just want to see them running up and down, like yeah. going nuts. They probably get dunked on. on <laughs> like, they would be Matador D offense, Central. That would be so fun. So Ooh. fun. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, if, I think if you switch, if you switch Hazonia and Knox to put Knox at the four, I think maybe, yeah. maybe it'd be I mean, all right for paint. We're maybe. interchangeable, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Yeah, you know. I don't so, know. That's still, that's still at that four. That's still kind of rough because yeah. I love Knox, but Knox got, you know, I don't know if he's built for the for that four yet. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
let him take his lumps. You know, it's like, what does this? It's going to be a whole lot of lump taking. Everybody's <laughs> long and undersized and underweight this season, for sure. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Mitchell, Knox. Well, Frank, yeah. well, maybe not Frank. He gained like 15 pounds. Dude, Frank's Frank's a buff boy now. Yeah, they said Frank put on some Frank muscle. They, they put him in the program. He, he grew an inch. Yeah, <laughs> they put him on the stretching rack all uh, yeah, all summer. Man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two weeks. Frank is gonna be able to guard senses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh, but that's man. the thing. I feel like in the East, like a lot of the fours now are, are like old threes. Like a lot of the, the the players playing, like what for Boston, don't they have uh, Morris playing the four now, who mm-hmm. started his career as a three? So I feel like you could, like like you say, it's interchangeable. So I guess the, no point in like sitting here like no, Mario should be the three, but it's like <laughs> they'll, they'll they'll be able to go back and forth. No problem. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I would love to see that lineup 100. percent Well, I don't know when or if it would happen at some point, but I would love to see that lineup just because of exactly what you said. Because we would be so good in the break. So, so bouncy. So oh bouncy. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> indeed, yeah. indeed. Well, Fizio's going to have his hands full, man. We got camp starting up September 25th. Preseason starting October 1st and the first game of the season, October 17th. So let's see uh, let's see how Fizdale earns his stripes now. Because uh, the honeymoon phase is, is almost over, man. You know, it's, it's been a long off season. Now it's... Uh, now it's time to play. So, yo, for everybody watching at home, vote on the panel today. Who made the best points? Vote for your winner of today's round table. Was it CK2K? Was it Alex Wolf? Or was it Jay Ellis? The fan poll is up at the top hand, at the right-hand side of the screen, at the top right, the little eye icon. Click on the eye and vote in tonight's fan poll for your winner. And we'll announce the winner on Saturday. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Yo, fellas, CK, Alex, Jay Ellis, appreciate the time, man. Until next time. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs>